Hello, my name is Kyle with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to show you a solution that Ian Dixon has come up with on how to create a query within Microsoft Access 2013. Ian Dixon has agreed to let us create this video showing his step-by-step -step process. This is also available on Ian's blog at the URL below. All right, so here I am inside of Microsoft Access 2013. Now, before we get in and begin to create the query, uh, I want to point out two things. And Ian brings these up inside of his article that's found on his blog. One, before we run a query, we should be familiar somewhat uh, with the data that's found inside of our, our database, inside of our tables. So we want to become familiar with, with the data and with the tables. Number two, and this is kind of an extension of becoming familiar with the tables, we want to be familiar with the relationships that are happening between our tables. So the purpose of a query is that I want to be able to query the database. I want to ask it a question. I want to search for specific information. Well, where's this information live at? Well, it's in a table or within multiple tables. So it only makes sense that we become familiar with the data that's found inside those tables. And once again, if we're including multiple tables, we need to know about the relationships that are happening between those tables because that's going to become very important as we get into the query and we start to ask it questions, ask our data questions, and, and try to pull that data from one table or multiple tables. So let's take a quick peek at the data that I have open in front of me. This is called the Northwind database. It's actually a database that comes with Microsoft Access. It's one of the templates that gets shipped with your copy of Access. So you can actually open this up on your own computer. So what I'm going to do here is within my copy of Access, I'm going to go into my tables. Let's expand that out. I'm going to open up two tables here, and these are going to be the two tables that I'm going to use inside my query. So first, I'll open up customers. I'll give that a double click. Let's open up my customer table. And in my customer table, I can see that I've got several records. There's actually 91 records in here to be exact. And we can see that down at the bottom of the screen. Now, as I become familiar with this table and with the data found in this table, I'm now going to know once I get into the query what it is that I can search for. Perhaps it's for a specific customer. Maybe it's by, I want to find customers by country or by city. Uh, or by perhaps their title, their contact title, whatever it might be. But the more familiar we are with the data, the better off and quicker time we're going to have once we get into the queries design view and start to build the query. So this is going to be one of my tables. I'll close that. And I'm going to open up one more here. Customers, they place orders. So I'm going to open up the orders table and just take a quick peek in here. And there's actually lots of data in here that I can start to query off of and search for specific orders for each of my customers. Maybe I want to see stuff by date, or I want to see information by freight. I want to see all the customers that have, have ordered more than $50, more than $100 worth of freight costs, and so on. But once again, become familiar with the data. Now when we start querying the database, asking it questions, we know what we're searching for. So this is, this is one thing that we should become familiar with before we get in there and start to create queries. The second thing, and Ian points this one out on, on his article found in his blog as well, is that we should become familiar with the relationships between these tables. I'm going to close that table. And if I hop up to the Database Tools tab at the top of my screen, there's a section called Relationships. And underneath Relationships, we've got a button called Relationships. So if I give that a click, this is going to open up the relationships window. These are all the relationships between the tables of this database. And remember, I'm looking at two specific ones. Here's my customers table. And here is my orders table. And I can see that these two tables do have a relationship connecting between the customer ID of the customers table and to the customers ID of the orders table. We've got a relationship. Customers know that they have related orders. Customer number one might have 20 orders. Customer number two might have 100 orders. Whatever it might be, but because of the relationship between these two tables, they know how, they know how to find one another. Customers can find their orders. 
And perhaps more importantly for us, as we get into creating a query, we can query information based on both these tables through the relationship. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, again, very important that we do become familiar with the data, the setup of the data and such, but now we can create an effective query. So I'll close my relationship window here and I'm gonna create a new query. So I'll hop up to my Create tab, top of the screen. And on my Create tab, I've got a section called Queries, and there's two options in there. I'm going to utilize the Query Design. I'm going to create a query from scratch. I'll give that a click. This opens up my Query Design view, where my first step, I get to pick the tables that I want to pull data from. So remember the two that I just, just discussed? I want to get the orders and the customers. So I'll come in here, I'll give customers a double click that adds the table to my query design. I'll give orders a double click. That one adds orders to my query design and I'll go ahead and close the show table window. So now that I've got my two tables in there and I can see that there is a relationship between these two tables. All right, we got a one to many relationship, a very common type of relationship. Now I'm gonna start adding pieces of these tables into my query. So for example, I'm creating a report and I want to report off of customers, but I want to be able to get information about specific customers' orders. So first, from my customers table, I'm going to grab a few of these fields. I'm going to get the customer ID. I'll give it a double click. I'm going to grab the uh, company name. And you know, I think that sounds good. I'm going to just get those two bits of information from the customers table. Now, from the orders table, the related table that we have, I'm going to get the order ID. I'll give that a double click. I'm going to get the three dates. I'll get order date, require date, ship date. That sounds good. I'm also going to get ship via, freight, and one more. Let's get ship country. So I've got a handful of fields here that I'm pulling from these two different tables, and I'm now going to get the records back customers and their orders. So let's run this just like it is right now. I want to see the results of this query. This is called the select query. I'm now going to go up to my design tab top of the screen and I'll click the run button. So this will execute the query. And as you can see, I've got a record set back, a set of records that consists of both customer information and their respective orders. So here I can see, for example, row number one, I've got the first customer there, Alf key, and I can see their customer ID and their company name, uh, and I can see information about their orders, their order ID, their dates, their ship date, their ship via, their freight, and so on. And these were shipped to Germany. So let's take this idea of a query a few steps further. Remember, the idea of a query is I get to question my database. I get to ask it, for specific information. I don't want to see all 830 orders for all my customers here. Perhaps I only want to see orders that were placed by customers in a specific country. So now I'm going to go up to my home tab top of the screen. I'll go to my view button and I'm going to go back into design view. All right, so back where I started. But now I want to ask it a specific question. I want to find specific records. So in this case, I'm going to go down into the query grid, bottom portion of the screen, and I'll find my ship country field. So underneath ship country, I'm going to go down into the criteria row, and I'm going to ask it for a specific country. So one of the countries in here, I'm going to search for Canada. So I'll type in Canada making sure I spell it correctly there. I'm going to hit my tab key once just to hop my cursor out of that field. And I can see that access has now put quotes around it. It's recognizing it as a text value or what we might call a string value. So now once again, I've asked it a question, give me back all the records where the criteria says ship country is equal to Canada. So now again, I'm going to go right back up to my design tab, back to the run button, execute that query, and now I've got back just the orders that were shipped to Canada.
And if I look down there at the bottom of the screen, we've got back 30 records. We did have 830, but 30 of them that we've now questioned about have come back with Canada. So there you have it, making a query inside of Microsoft Access 2013. I'd like to thank Ian for allowing us to come in and create this video demonstrating his step-by-steps on how to create a Microsoft Access query within Access 2013. Make sure you jump out and visit Ian's site for more information and more tutorials within Access 2013.